before we head back to port last, as we're playing Storm of Zaheer, there's one area I want to deal with, this Arcane Brotherhood outpost. This is a fairly difficult area, but I'm going to have to rest after doing it, and we're going back to town anyway. So that started a little faster than I expected. I cast some buffs and immediately got Bigby Forceful Hand on my uh, main cleric here. There are... That is kind of the shtick of this area. There are some fairly normal enemies, just, you know, pirates. And then there are um, mages. And the mages cast pretty much... They just spam Big Beast Forceful Hand and other spells that pretty much... Well, they're bad. Cloud of Bewilderment does affect me, too. If you want to use Cloud of Bewilderment a lot, it's helpful to cast protection from good so that you don't um, mess up your own characters with it. But in this case, it's also affecting them a lot more. So, gets rid of them. So I'll clean up and be right back. So I've summoned a lot of stuff, and guess pretty much every buff I know, because this fight coming up is not easy. More or less, there are two berserkers here, two pirate captains who are fighter mage types. Oh, sorry, there's one pirate captain, and then two host tower wizards in the back. The two berserkers will take a lot of pounding to kill, and the... Host Tower Wizards are really what I'm concerned about because, again, they spam Bigby's Forceful Hand. I've cast a lot of summons just so that there's something to keep the Berserkers busy, but my primary focus is getting rid of these two Wizards. And again, he got Big V's forceful handed, so he's not doing anything for the rest of the fight. Well, that's that. I'll the purpose of this, of course, was this arcane nexus sitting here. The loot we found in that area was this ring of resistance plus three, which isn't bad, I guess. Uh, Luskin battle mage's rapier, which is just a plus three rapier. Uh, another bowl of elementals, and this weird robe, which isn't really all that great. On our way back into town, I'm going to buy, do a little trading for some resources so I can buy upgrade. I'm also going to pick up one knucklehead ivory for the sensate. In town, we'll head for the garrison and talk with Mr. Mayor and hand in our quest. I persuaded the priestess. Yeah, um, that's one way to put it. And he tells you we still have an army of the dead to deal with. And they're coming from the east. 
you can actually talk to and get sort of started on this quest otherwise, but unless you actually have him tell you they're coming from the east, you can't find the location where that resolves this quest. And the undead are invading town again. I'm just going to kill them off screen. Now that we know what direction to go, let's talk to Septiment. And, uh, yeah, so he pretty much he just babbles at you for a while and says you want to help him, and he'll join up. You can also convince him to join earlier without knowing where the quest is uh, using diplomacy skill, but he'll leave your party if you go too far from part last, so it's sort of pointless. Septimind is probably the best of the available cohorts. He's not, you know, incredibly well built from a standpoint of, uh, you know, just min-maxing, but he has well done stats, and he's a useful class and has a useful... Um, you know, set of spells. So if you were going to use a cohort, Septimind is one of the better choices. I'm going to leave Septimind in my party for a little while because you have to do so if you want to uh, have him join permanently. He's really um, not super important for this next area, but it does factor into the ending, so we'll deal with it and bring him along. I've set him to puppet mode. He and I'll tell him to stay put, so he's not actually going to do anything. I meant to rest up in town, but I didn't, and I'm not too worried about it. This area is not that hard. There's just a lot of enemies. Well, we got our buffs cast, so let's get to it. That skeleton there just has a torch. If you actually had Turn on Dead, this would be a faster area. It's not like these enemies are hard. In fact, they're sort of tedious because they just... I don't know. <laughs> they just don't do anything and they die not fast enough. These wraiths here are slightly more dangerous, but not exactly that bad. Again, since we're, I've upgraded all of our armor, um, normal enemies really are going to have trouble hitting me. And hitting the tank is more or less out of the question for normal enemies. I mean, they can always roll a 20, um, but... And I'm just going to run around up here. I'll clean this. There's a couple pieces of minor loot hanging around here, but I'll clean them up later, and I'll show you on the map. So that's everything for the, uh, the area, except for this person in here, Naya. And we need Septimund to talk to her. Unfortunately, Septimund's being stupid, so I'll be right back. As I mentioned before, in order to talk, somebody actually has to be there, which I guess makes sense. So, Nia and Septiman know each other, and, uh, you know, you they have a nice little conversation. And more or less, Nia loved Septiman, and Septiman is just, you know, a faithful cleric of Kelimvor, and, well, you know, He'll, he can talk her out of, you know, continuing to summon the undead to get his attention. I, you know, people in love do stupid things, I guess. Me 
And there are a couple recipes here, none of which are really important. There's another recipe for Headband of Intellect plus 6, though, uh, if you manage to miss the other one. Now we'll just have a little chat with Septiment, and uh, you can use a little dis diplomacy to um, have him join your party permanently. And apparently my animal companion is being buggy. I'm going to clean up this area and meet you back on the map. When you head back to Port Last, you'll see a new option, inquire about establishing a trading post. So we need three units of ore, which, or sorry, five units of ore, which we'll just buy, because we can. And we'll establish our trading post. And Port Last now becomes pretty similar to the other towns. And we'll construct our caravan, and Neverwinter is the only place it can go, which is really too bad, but it's something. And we can hand in our quest. And now I can go back to Neverwinter and get even more XP reward for the same quest. Before we hand in that that one, though, we can hand in our yet another piece of Orcane Nexus piece. And he makes some babbling about shadow magic. And we talk to him. And we get one more Arcane Attenuator. And this is the last one. There's one more place to go on the Sword Coast, so we won't have to go back to Samarok. Well, we will eventually, but not for this quest. While we're in town, I'm going to hand in this Knucklehead Ivory to uh, the Sensate, just to get out of my inventory. Then I'll head into the Temple, and we hand in this quest. And, okay, and we can purchase a promotion, which doesn't really do much, but, you know, it costs a thousand trade bars, and I don't, I think you have to do it to advance the plot. I always end up doing it, because eventually I have enough trade bars that I really don't care. Speaking of which, I'm going to head back to Crossroad Keep and see what I can do as far as getting some money. It's not exactly on the way, but I'm also going to stop by Leylon down here to pick up some adamantine before I go to Crossroad Keep. So let's see how much Varial has for us. In this case, about 10,000 trade bars, which is handy because I'm going to need to turn some of those into gold. Um, maybe, you know, grab another, what is that? Just another 100,000. I'm eventually going to have to go up to New Leaf and set up the last set of um, trading posts, but... We'll do that next time, because that's it for this episode.